Good morning everyone. We're back once again with another amazing science tutorial video. And in this video, we're going to be talking about the relationship between genotypes and phenotypes. So if you notice in the picture, it shows that the genotype codes for the phenotype. So that means your genotypes code for your physical makeup or traits. So we'll be basing this off of genetics, which is the study of heredity. And heredity is the passing of genetic traits from parents to offspring. So we have dad right here, plus mom, and this is going to yield the, this offspring right here. So dad, mom, offspring. And we'll be showing how the genotypes code for those phenotypes. We'll be basing this off of Mendel's Law of Dominance, which states that some traits hide or amass the effect of others. And with this, we have an allele, which is a single gene. And two, two alleles make a trait. So, for example, I have a big T and a little t. Alleles may be dominant, which means they hide the other traits. So, for example, a tall or a big T would hide a small T, which means that that individual is going to have is going to be tall. That's going to be their phenotype. And then we have recessive, and the trait seems to disappear. So, for example, we have short. And the only way a recessive trait shows is that if there is no dominant trait there. So, for example, if I had two little t's that would show, that recessive trait would show, and that person or that individual would be short. So, here's our two examples. Our first example, we have a big T for tall, crossed with a short, with a little t, and all the individuals crossed from this big T and little t are going to be tall. Why? Because this big T is going to hide or mask this little t, which means the individuals will always be tall. Now, let's look at our second example. Say if we had a short T crossed with another short T, that means all these individuals are going to be short because there are no dominant traits or there are no big T's to actually hide or mask this recessive trait. Let's dive deeper into dominant and recessive alleles. Dominant traits will have a capital letter. So for example, I have a B right here, and it could be a capital B, a capital A, Z or K. As long as that letter is going to be capital, then it's going to be dominant. Recessive allele, recessive traits will have a lowercase letter or a lowercase B, A, Z, and just like I stated with dominant, it doesn't matter which letter, if that letter is lowercase, then it's going to be recessive. So for example, we have a purple allele, allele with a capital P, and then we have a white allele with a lowercase p. So in order for that purple allele to show, there are two ways it can show. I can have a capital P and a capital P, which both are dominant, or I can have a capital P and a lowercase p. Remember, if you look at the law of dominance, if we have a capital letter, it's always going to hide or mask that lowercase letter. So both of these would show as purple for that allele. And then in order for it to be a white allele, it can only come in one way. You're going to have two lowercase p's. Remember, if there's one uppercase p, that means it's going to dominate or it's going to hide or mask that lowercase p. So in order, what, uh, the only way we can have a white allele is if it shows as two lowercase, which is going to be the recessive alleles. Let's take a look at some other genetic terms. We have homozygous and heterozygous. And homozygous means that it's pure or the organism has the same alleles for a trait. So if you notice, you have two big T's and you have two lowercase T's. In both cases, it's homozygous because both alleles are the same for that trait. And then if we look, we have heterozygous. Hetero means it's going to be different. So it's going to be also be called known as a hybrid. And you're going to have different alleles for a trait. So for example, you have a big T and a little t. Notice both of those are different. That's why we have that word hetero. So let's take a look at these. And we're going to identify whether the following genotypes will be homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive, or heterozygous dominant. So we'll do the first two together. If you notice, we have a capital B and a lowercase b. And with the capital B and lowercase b, since they are different, it's going to be heterozygous. And since that capital B covers up or masks that lowercase b, it's going to be heterozygous dominant. And then let's look at number two. We have two capital B, so they're the same. So it's going to be homozygous. And since it's two capital Bs, 
they're going to be dominant. So it's going to be homozygous dominant. Ladies and gentlemen, you have one minute to complete problems 3 through 10, and I'll pause the video beginning now. Welcome back, everyone. Let's see how you did on problems 3 through 10. If you notice on number three, you have two lowercase p's. So since they're the same, they're gonna be homozygous. And since they're logo, lowercase, they're gonna be recessive. Look at number four. We have two lowercase k's. So they're the same, they're gonna be homozygous. And then since they're lowercase, they're gonna be recessive. Number five, we have a capital N and a lowercase n. So they're different, so it's gonna be heterozygous. But since we have the capital N, it's going to mask that lowercase n. So it's going to be heterozygous dominant. And then number six, two capital A's. So that's going to be homozygous dominant. Number seven, two capital C's. So that's going to be homozygous dominant. Number eight, we have a capital O and a lowercase o. And that's going to be heterozygous dominant. Number nine, we have two lowercase t's, which is going to give us a homozygous recessive. And then if you look at number 10, we have a capital R and a lowercase r, which is going to be heterozygous dominant. I know you did wonderful on those. Now let's take a look at genotypes. So genotypes are the genetic makeup of an organism or a group of organisms with reference to a single trait, set of traits, or an entire complex of traits. So this is how we all come out different because we all have different genotypes. In a genotype, the alleles for the genes of a trait are going to be the letters. So that's why we have that capital B and the lowercase b. If you notice, this is a review, but we have homozygous dominant, which means you're going to have two capital letters. Heterozygous dominant, which is going to be a capital letter and a lowercase letter. And then we're going to have homozygous recessive, which is going to have two lowercase letters. Letters. So if you notice, we have a Punnett square right here, which is a monohybrid cross Punnett square because we're only looking at one trait and you notice if we have two capital b's then they're going to be dominant and show that purple a capital b and a lowercase b is going to still be heterozygous and it's going to be dominant because that capital b hides or masks that lowercase b we have another capital b and lowercase b where that capital b hides that lowercase b that's dominant and then you notice right here, we have two lowercase b's, and that's the only time that recessive trait is going to show. So let's look at phenotypes. And phenotypes are the physical appearance of an organism resulting from its genetic makeup. So that, like I stated at the beginning of this video, the genetic makeup or the genetics code, the genotype codes for the phenotype. So here's our phenotype is blue eyes, but how do we get those blue eyes? So the genotype for blue, blue eyes is going to be two lowercase or a recessive allele. So the only time those blue eyes show is that if you have those two recessive traits show. And then our phenotype is going to be brown eyes on this side. And our genotype for this can be a dominant and a recessive trait or two dominant traits. So we have the capital B and lowercase b, and then we have a capital B and a capital B. And in this one, the dominant is going to show because we have at least one capital letter showing. Now let's practice to summarize the concepts that we learned in this video. So we're going to use the following traits to determine genotype and phenotype. So we'll be looking at earlobes, hair type, height, thumb, and eyelashes. And for this first part, we're going to write out the genotypes for these people. So we'll do one through three or the first three together, and then you're gonna do the next seven independently on your own. So let's look at the first one. We have heterozygous long eyelashes. So heterozygous means different. So for this one, we're gonna have a capital L and a lowercase L. Homozygous straight thumb. Homozygous or homo means same. So straight thumb is gonna be dominant. So we're gonna have that capital S and that capital S. Now let's look at tall. There are two ways we can show tall. We can use a capital T and another capital T, or we can use a capital T and a lowercase t. Remember that dominant trait is going to show over that lowercase trait. So both of these represent tall. You have one minute to complete the next seven problems, and I'll pause the video beginning now. Now let's see how well you did. We did the first three together, so let's look at the next seven. So let's look at straight hair. Straight hair is going to be a recessive trait. So you're going to have two lowercase letters, which should show with two lowercase c's. 
heterozygous free earlobes. Since it's heterozygous, you're going to have a capital letter and a lowercase letter. So it should be capital E and lowercase e. Hitchhiker thumb is also going to be recessive. So the hitchhiker thumb is going to show two lowercase s's. Heterozygous curly hair, you're going to be have a capital C and a lowercase c. Straight thumb is going to be, you can show it as two capital S's, or we can show it as a capital S and a lowercase s. And then if we look short eyelashes, we that's going to be recessive trait, so you're going to have two lowercase l's. And then homozygous attached lobes. Attached lobes are going to be recessive, so you're going to have two lowercase e's. Now let's do some practice problems for the phenotypes for these people. So if we look, we have a capital E and a lowercase e. So that capital E is going to be dominant over that lowercase e. So the physical traits or the phenotypes for this individual is, is going to be free earlobes. Now let's take a look at our next person. This next person has two lowercase c, so that lets us know it's going to be a recessive trait, and it's going to be straight. They're going to have straight hair. So they will have straight hair since they have those two lowercase c's. And then let's look at our next person. They have these two lowercase e's, so here we are with another recessive. So that means they're going to have attached earlobes. And the reason why this recessive shows, this recessive trait shows, is because there is no dominant trait there. There is no capital E there. Ladies and gentlemen, you have one minute to complete the following phenotypes, and I'll pause the video beginning now. Now, let's look at the last seven problems and see how you did. So we have, right here, we have a capital T and a lowercase t. This capital T is going to be dominant over lowercase t. So this person is going to be tall. Then we have a capital S and a lowercase s. Capital S is dominant over lowercase s. So this person is going to have a straight thong. We have two lowercase l. So this recessive trait is going to show. So they're going to have short eyelashes. Then we have a capital L and a lowercase l. Remember, the capital L is going to be dominant over the lowercase l, so this person is going to have long eyelashes. Then we have two capital C's, which is going to, the person is going to have curly hair. Two capital L's, the person is going to have long eyelashes. And then a capital C and a lowercase c. And since the capital C is dominant over the lowercase c, this person is going to have curly hair. Ladies and gentlemen, I know you did very well on this. I'm Chavis Spivey, signing off with Jordan Spivey, and I hope this video tutorial was helpful for you. Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful, awesome day. Peace.